What's up guys, Main Mounts, we here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, welcome to another Tekken Revisited video. And today I'm joined by Dual Armor Kings in Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Not my favorite Tekken game, but they certainly are fans of this game, many of you, and there are some cool things in the game. But what could make an interesting video in my opinion is looking a little bit at Armor King in this game and how he excels compared to Armor King in Tekken 7. And why is that? And it's pretty interesting. It's a combination of them altering a few key moves in Armor King's toolset, but it's much more so about the environment he is in and also being robbed by his colleague known as King. Got robbed. A dirty, smelly king actually stole some of Armor King's best moves. Stole his identity. How dare you. But, uh, so let's just take it one step at a time. The first thing I want to focus on is just the environment of Tekken Tag Tournament 2. So, Armor King, he's a grappler. He's a pseudo Mishima with his dark upper. He actually relies a lot on whiff punishment. That's something he does really well. With strong movement into dark upper. Cr crouch dash, prolonged into dark upper. Uh, movement, sidestep, punished with 4-2-1. Very strong uh, whiff punishment. But what do we need to access strong whiff punishment? We need strong movement. Tag 2 has much stronger movement than uh, Tekken 7, favoring Armor King a lot in his dark upper. Another very, very important thing about the Tag 2 environment, the universe of Tag 2, is that all throw breaks, uh, command throws, default throws, you have 15 frames to break them. So that goes for all of these command throws, giant swing, tombstone, for reference, in Tekken 7, it's always 20 frames. You have 5 more frames of leniency. And default throws are like, what, 25 frames in Tekken 7? All of the throws in this game, 15 frames. Much, much harder. Do you remember Fakum Rams down for 1 plus 2 throw? That felt impossible to break. That was 14 frames. So that was one, only one frame worse than Tag 2. So yes, as a grappler with arguably the second best throws in the game behind King, uh, holy shit, was throws were very strong in Tag 2. So when you have a tombstone, giant swing, Armor King thrived in this environment. So again, movement, he has great whiff punishment. Small uh, windows to break throws. He's a grappler with second best throws in the game. Environment is important. And next uh, thing I want to touch upon is that he was unique. King um, was to be the, you know, um, Jaguar head grappler in Tekken 7. Armor King was actually never meant to be in that game. Only season 1 was guaranteed with Geese, Noctis, and Eliza. But the game actually performed so well that hmm, the developers, Harada and Murray, added content they actually weren't planning on adding um, originally. So as you know, with the launch of Tekken 7, King had stolen Armor King's down 3 and 4 to 1. And this was because the developers were like, we're, we're scaling down the roster, we don't want Armor King anymore, we're gonna focus on King, he's more popular. Uh, so yes, in Tekken 7, King has some of Armor King's best moves. 4 to 1 is an amazing whiff punish or wall pressure tool. King has stolen that, and it's even better than Armor King's. Down freeze, an excellent low, plus one. Set up, sets up an uninterruptible giant swing, or pressure. Great low. In this game, only Armor King has these moves. Greatly separating him from King, who has much worse whiff punishment, much worse lows. But in Tekken 7, you know, when King gains this low, Mm, Armor King loses identity and yeah, this is uh, in favor of Armor King in Tag 2 because in Tekken 7 it's like should you play King or Armor King while well, they share some of the best moves um, 
So yeah, this is one of the reasons, you know, Armor King stood out so much in Tag 2. It's due to these tools were excellent, and, and only he had them. Uh, and next thing we're gonna look at, and this is super important, and this is actually the tool JDCR, who's arguably the greatest Armor King player of all time. This is the tool he misses the most from Tag 2, and it's Sidestep 2-1. This move has been greatly watered down in, and there's, there, a lot goes into explaining this move, I'm gonna do my best, but it's been very watered down in, um, in Tekken 7. You have to do the whole thing, sidestep 2 does nothing on its own, so you have to do the whole thing, and the whole thing forces crouch and is minus 13 on block, but you get a launch. But in, in tag 2, uh, you could do sidestep 2 alone, and that knocks down 22 damage into a guaranteed 3 plus 4. And as you see, uh, that 3 plus 4 will only stomp them if they lay down, but if they try and get up again, they get floated. Uh, th this was a very, very strong uh, mid. For, for Armor King. And Armor King in Tekken 7 lacks strong safe mids. Well, uh, here you go. This is what uh, people used to use. Uh, and this is minus 12 on block. But the thing is, and this is also very interesting where, where spacing came in. Uh, one second, I'm, going, I'm just going to very quickly record my uh, buddy, my twin Armor King here to use this move. Uh, let's see, where we go, uh, sorry I'm playing with reversed controls, uh, so there you have a move, if he does it from point blank, I can back one to punish because it is minus 12, that's a punish as you can see it says punish in red, but as JDCR would space it, it has a lot of range, you do it from a little bit away, and suddenly that's not a punish. Suddenly it's minus 11. And this is where you hit, you try and jab him. And this is interesting, when he does it, he pokes, but when he takes a step away, if you notice that, he takes a step away, you can't jab him here. Even if he has his back towards the wall, jabs will whiff. So th th it's very deceptive that move. Very strong mid. So again, up close, back one two, will connect, but a good player will always be a little bit away from you due to its great range. And when you block it from there, jabs will whiff, and min 12, minus 12 punishers will be blocked, and you will be punished in turn. And you always have to fear him using the second hit. Which, uh, if the first hit hasn't connected, boom, 28 damage, great frames, and if he hits both of them, Yeah, um, big damage. Uh, so yeah, this... It can't be overstated how strong this move is. Uh, sidestep to one. Uh, incredible mid. That if he had that in Tekken 7, he would be much, much stronger. Uh, and then down two in Tekken 7, of course, has a follow up. It's now a, f a free hit string if you do the whole thing. Down two, four, he kicks, and then he does a roll with an additional three. And uh, pretty worthless gimmick and string. It's very punishable, it's very telegraphed. Uh, and if, if due to that, give, they gave him an extension, but they worsened the frames of down two. In this game, it's it's minus one to minus two on block, uh, down two on its own. In Tekken 7, it's minus five. Much worse. And a normal hit in this game, plus eight. On counter hit, plus 12. And respectively, in Tekken 7, on hit, it's like plus... Five, I think and on counter hit. I think it's plus eight or nine So uh, they worsened the frames and of course you also have to add here that in tag 2 
this move is a perfectly safe uh, bound to you. It bounds. So if you catch, if you do this and you're catching them, hop kicking, doing any form of attack where they are airborne jumping, it will uh, bound them for a combo. So that's obviously something you have to factor in into the strength of this attack. Uh, so these key mids here, mm, very much, um, you know, Armor King, some of Armor King's best tools in Tag 2. And a bit neutered in, uh, in Tekken 7. And of course, as we talked about the down 2, well, the disgusting Oki, again, about the environment of Tag 2. Down 2 is an amazing bound tool. So fast and hit so low that it connects after free electrics. Not a lot of bound tools would do that. And it's perfectly safe and spammable. Only minus one to minus two on block. And uh, yeah, due to the Oki system in this game, all of these mids that knock down that he still has in Tekken 7, they were just that much deadlier in Tag 2 as you could go for stomps. Or if they tried to evade the stomps, you just down two. Blam and boom, he's launched. Just, um, it's, yeah, it's very powerful Oki tool. So again, the Oki system. And this goes for King as well, as I demonstrated before. Uh, the insane Frankensteiner in this game. Oki. You see Frankenstein her blam, boom, that's guaranteed. I can't escape that. That's 75 damage. Uh, and of course, uh, his, his ground throw. You know, in this game where combos were enormous with, with the tag assault, you, you could do the most disgusting stuff. And with his uh, ground throw mix up at the wall, uh, he would get devastating damage. But so would Marduk and uh, King as well. But this throw where he stands them up, you could do absurd setups in this game. That's pretty much dead. Oh. Okay, whatever. You, you, you can't do that. Uh, and then also, I, I do want to add that Armor King also favors movement in that he, he's, he's a large bloke. He's a pretty big dude. And some of his key pokes are down for one, that's his, well, some of his key pokes, that's his key po mid poke, and then key low poke is down four. And that's especially interesting with movement in that if, if this is blocked from far away, a lot of characters actually can't punish it due to how far back he is. But being able to dash back and forth with these and utilizing Armor King's great range with those two pokes in conjunction works really well in Tag 2, and less so in uh, Tekken 7, where movement is restricted. Uh, you'll see JDCR do this flawlessly in Tag 2, and it's just, a, again, this where the environment favors him so much more in Tag 2. So that's the presentation I had in mind for Armor King. Uh, I'd just like to show you guys, uh, I, I love to play this team, and a really cool combo they had was this. Isn't that pretty damn sick? I love that combo. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope it was interesting to you, trying to highlight why Armor King, mm, great in Tag 2, not so much in Tekken 7, but we'll see if they buff him in the future. I hope they do so. But still, if you play in beginner, intermediate, and high level, it's up to you, uh, not so much the character. In pro play, he suffers though. Thank you so much for listening to me and have a lovely day. Take care.